Hey, Dennis, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Oh, so nice to see you. I was rooting for you so much. A lot of people were. So I do want to ask you, I want to start off because whew, when I was watching you in the pool room right after you got back door, I wanted to jump through that screen for you. I was so upset for you. So I just want to ask you already, how did you feel in that moment when Vivek played you, Loki? <laughs> uh, you know what? There was a certain strength. Uh, and I think the way I spoke, there was a confidence because this was just a betrayal. And, and I found strength in that. And I was able to express that to mm -hmm. that person. Uh, utter disbelief. None of this made sense. Uh, and and, and it, it made me view him very differently. Uh, he, I thought he was a strong person. And this was very quickly in my mind, a very weak move, uh, a cowardly move that he made. Uh, and, and just the words he was saying, like, this is the game that you taught me, just did not, this is not you. This is not you. Someone else got to you. You were yeah. a puppet right now. Uh, I, I, I know I could have been more dramatic and and there were swear words but i think what i did was was more powerful yeah and you know what it was because i i remember watching and thinking oh my god i would have had to put my hands on somebody low-key so i'm glad that you handled it more gracefully and, and like you said it was more powerful i feel like even Vivek's reaction, I feel like it was even stronger than what it would have been if you would have been just screaming at the top of your lungs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I agree with that. So like I'm getting my points across of what you did wrong. Exactly. And you're and you were you were saying a lot of you were saying a lot in that moment, and you were telling him, How are you going to win after this? And you also mentioned that you've been applying for the show for 10 years and you can like kind of feel the hurt when you were speaking about your love for the show. So I did want to give you the opportunity to tell us what it meant for you to be on Big Brother Canada since you did bring it up. Oh, oh my God, this has been so long, so long I've been trying, so many close calls. And, and I think as a fan, at least for me, the ultimate expression of fandom is to be on the show and be involved in it and mm -hmm. partake in all the things that you've read about, that you've studied about, that you've uh, commented about, that you've discussed. Like, there is no one in my life that has not heard me discuss Big Brother. And I think this was the ultimate way of showing that love for the game, is being in it and doing the things as a fan that you want to do. Uh, so it, it was, it meant so much. It meant mm -hmm. the fanboy in me every day took moments to appreciate where I was and how long it took. Uh, every day I would look around and, and almost come to tears because I enjoyed it all. Yeah, dang, that feels so, it feels so good, like as a fan myself. And I know there's a lot of fans out there who really resonated well with you in that house. So I really appreciate that. I also appreciate um, in your intro video, you mentioned how you're queer and that that was something a part of your identity. And in the show, we saw you have a connection with Avery a little bit. So I did want to ask, do you, how do you feel like being queer in the house, being LGBTQ in the house, how do you feel like that affected your experience? Um, there will always be, um, there will always be biases, of course, and there will biases in language. Uh, and you notice that a lot. Uh, there seems to be a hetero normative uh, narrative and language uh and so sometimes i would catch myself correcting people like it's not just him and her there are other variations uh there's also other gender expressions um it didn't hinder me any in any way uh i think we've grown enough that it would i wouldn't feel like an outsider mm -hmm. i only felt like an outsider um because i wanted to because i wanted to observe things Mm -hmm. uh, it was never like, oh, these people are making me feel uncomfortable. No, I'm confident enough to check people when I need to. Um, yeah. Don't use that kind of language, or maybe this is a better term for you to use. Um, it was important for me to be me, and I am queer, and representing me is the easiest form of of, of politics. Mm -hmm. Just be taking that space. Yeah, thank you for saying that because I feel like a lot of the times there are still people who are concerned about how they might blend into the environment. And even though your experience, you didn't like because you didn't have anything that made you feel like you were outcast because of that, I think it's good for fans to still hear that and understand that, look, like there is opportunity for you in the game. So thank yep. you. I appreciate you for saying that. So I do want to ask about the game because 
<laughs> Vivek decided to put you on the block after you had used a veto on him the week before. You had went out of your way kind of to build a relationship with him. So now that time has passed, you got a little more information from the exit uh, interviews. Why do you think <laughs> Vivek did what he did? Why do you really think he put you up? Um, I think someone with a golden tongue got into his ear and uh, offered him a lot of sugar that he needed or his ego needed. I think he's an impressionable person uh, maybe a little insecure and someone provided him comfort um, that maybe I couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe that person weaponized it, I think, uh, that comfort. Who do you um, think it was? Who do you think that person was? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, we know Anthony, we know Anthony orchestrated. If he didn't get into his ear, he orchestrated that. Uh, and he, he, know, he knows, this is why it, this is why I was targeted, because he knows that sort of talk does not work on someone not as impressionable. Mm -hmm. uh, I could, you are giving me sugar, man, and I, and I need I need a meal. Uh, everyone else could survive on the sugar, but I cannot. And he saw that in me. And I think he weaponizes that, uh, which is, he's doing a great job about it, but I mm -hmm. could see through that. And and it, it, it worked for Vivi. Yes, and so I do want to ask you about that, because I, I think what you're saying is true. And I think you're super aware that that's true. So I want to ask you, why didn't you, I guess, pretend? Or why did you, you were very open with not necessarily being um, succumbed to Anthony. You were like, you didn't even talk to him for a few days. You kind of were okay with, you know, hinting at his name. And you knew he was this powerful being. So why didn't you pretend like everyone else? Or at least, Maybe he, they're not pretending, and that's the oh issue. My God, he would have seen, you know he would have seen the, through that. You know, like, and, and there's only so much you can just listen to, but he would have seen that. Mm -hmm. He, right off the bat, uh, as someone who would not, he knows. He knows who he can manipulate. Yeah. Um, and I was, when we weren't speaking, because there was a, a period where we were speaking or catching up, I was trying to build other things. Uh, and so my my attention was to the girls who were naming, but not naming him, and I needed to give them the time so that they would trust me in whatever I needed to do. Because mm -hmm. eventually a pitch had to happen. Eventually, not an alliance, but an understanding had to happen. And so my efforts needed to be elsewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. it, that could have, if I spent more time with Anthony, it could have benefited me. But in the long run, would it have? Like, I think we would have just butt heads. Like, we're not giving each other what we need. I'm not being manipulated by you. So I'm not a resource to you and you're not giving me what I need. Uh, it would have been an ongoing thing. Yeah, that's fair. So you did build this connection with the girls. You built this relationship with them, this understanding that, you know, he who shall not be named might need to be be gone after. And you, you kind of campaigned to them at the beginning, at least still including this idea to them, like, okay, I can still be this person who does this for you. And it seems like the girls weren't budging and then they didn't vote to save you. So if they were understanding of it, and if they knew that that person, Anthony needed to get out of the game, why do you think they didn't go all in on you? Why do you think that? I This, this has been the number one question. I just didn't understand. The votes were there to keep Bailey when she was on the block and, mm -hmm. and Kayla used it. I. The only thing I can think of, there is a mole. There is a mole leaking in information. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I They were, like, they even acknowledged that they were operating in fear. And I could provide them support or unison. Uh, not necessarily being a man leading women. I don't even think that way. Just someone else's voice mm -hmm. and understanding. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to fall into the trap where this is what happens with girls' alliances. They can't be, I don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of speaking to that and supporting that idea and that's unfortunate um I, I do feel like there was a mole which caused paranoia amongst them because mm -hmm. spicy b did tell you in her video that the reason she was a part of your eviction was because she was so close to anthony um and i want to ask you because a lot of people not just you a lot of people are willing to give spicy b into anti-anthony information but they came in both as veterans was that something you considered no, um, I, I didn't really have a relationship with her until her HOH and I was in power. And one thing that she mentioned to me that always stuck with me was I wish our positions were sh shifted, mm -hmm. that you were the HOH and I was the POV because she oppressed upon me that I, I would have taken Dougie out. 
because she mentioned something that operates outside of the game, which I really hate, which was the alumni would not like another alumni to take another alumni. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that would be bad. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I understand this, but now there's this other level of gameplay that is not fair to introduce into the house. So mm -hmm. just giving me that information showed trust and vulnerability that I had to work off of. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so here at the Reality Kingdom, we like to keep it real. So I want to ask you, do you feel like you were too real for that house or that you weren't real enough when you were in the house? Oh, oh shit. I... <laughs> I don't think I have any other way. Like the way you see me now is the way I was in the house, the way I am in real life. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't really turn that off. Uh, it's a benefit. Uh, you can put me in any sort of situation and I can get along with anyone. I'm very well-rounded. And I think my honesty is refreshing to some. And that is almost like a shorthand for trust. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I weaponize that enough. I don't think I spread it out enough with uh, the, the house people, uh, the house people, the housemates. <laughs> um, but I am, I am, I am real. I am real. Okay, fair enough. Um, you told Arissa in your exit interview that, which surprised me, she asked you, who are you rooting for? Who do you think will win? And you said, Tola. Girl, what's that tea? Wait, why do you, why do you think Tola I'm, of all I'm, people? This is apparently a big thing amongst uh, people <laughs> thus far. I don't think you're seeing Tola and, and, and that's his gameplay. He's playing this as a marathon. Mm -hmm. That. He has been target since day one and has managed to slip by every HOH, every eviction. His social game has improved uh, a lot. And him and I saw each other very early on as game players and analytical minds and rational people. And this week I was building that relationship with him even more so. Mm -hmm. Even during my pitch, I had a last ditch pitch that I went to him and said, listen, you operate on a rational level. I need to ask you rationally, is this appealing? And so there was that relationship going on. Don't, don't, don't just uh, ignore him. There's, there is a lot going on there. He's going to last a while. I like that. All right. So this is my last question, Dennis. I do want to ask you, do you have any advice for super fans like yourself, like me coming onto the show? What would you give them? You're going to hate this one because it goes against everything that a super fan wants to do. Lay low for the, literally, Lay low for the first half. I don't uh, do nothing. Do nothing. Resist the urge to stand out. Resist the urge to win those comps. Really lay low. I, I hate saying that, but if you want to win, that's what you do. All right. Thank you, Dennis. It was nice talking to you. Thank you very much, Farrell.